You know how I like to say, just because you can do a five-hour main card for WrestleMania doesn't mean you should. It's kind of like sex. You could, in theory, go 45 minutes to an hour, but let's face it, after 10 to 15, it's kind of boring. Just hurry up, get your nut, and be the fuck done with it, and maybe come back another time. Those big shows that WWE has now, where they're all four hours-ish, and then WrestleMania plus pre-show, you're talking about seven plus hours. It's just too god dang much. One of the things that is a little refreshing in concept when it comes to NXT is their big shows are not nearly as long. That's helpful. That's refreshing. I think it's one of the reasons that some people naturally gravitate towards their product more because they get less of the product overall. It's not nearly as overexposed, it's not nearly as rammed down their throat. It's one thought of many. But it certainly doesn't hurt. But whereas I feel like WrestleMania could do with less show, less matches, less wrestling, I look at NXT TakeOver, these big shows you're doing every two to three months, and I feel like sometimes they could actually do with more. Not necessarily length of time of the show, because by God, on a weekend like WrestleMania week, and there's enough wrestling for everybody to have to try and choke on. But maybe more matches that feature more people. Because I come back to this fundamental principle. Just because you can have matches go longer, that doesn't make them better. That is, quantity of match is not always directly related to quality of match. Some matches can be five minutes and work perfectly. They can be 10 to 15 and totally get the job done. But when you take a match that maybe should be five or 10 minutes, and you stretch it out 20, 25, or 30, you're asking for a lot, and you're asking for too much. And what happens to me with these takeover shows is the matches are too damn long. If I wanted to watch other fucking indie feds, or if I wanted to watch other notable companies out there in the wrestling landscape where they do this same damn crap, where every match feels the same, every match has the same type of wrestlers doing the same type of moves with the same number of freaking ridiculous false finishers, then I would watch one of those other products. But I would expect, if nothing else, that WWE would get the concepts of time management. They would get the concepts of trying to break things up because otherwise it becomes monotonous. And surely, again, as is so often the case, I will be in the minority here, and that's good. I'm glad I'm in the minority here. Because when I watched NXT TakeOver New York on Friday night, I had the brakes board off me. God, that was so dull. It was. Like the opening tag match to me, you know, what's so different from that than any other number of tag team matches that I've seen? And it goes over 20 freaking minutes. Did that match need to go over 20 damn minutes? The answer is no. You know, then you got Matt Riddle versus Velveteen Dream. Matt Riddle was a little impressive to me, I'll grant you. And I enjoy the talent that is Patrick Clark, that is the Velveteen Dream. Um, that match kind of worked for me, but even I felt like that could have been a little too long. I think it was like 17 or 18 minutes. And it was the second show in his match on the card. It's just too goddamn long. And maybe part of it is, is that I'm getting older and I have less overall interest in wrestling and I have so many other just things were going on right now in life that are distracting me, that maybe I just can't focus that much. And maybe that's just part of it. And maybe that's true. Maybe I'm not in the best place mentally to be able to sit down and watch this much or watch, in this case, matches go this long, especially knowing the long hole I wrote I have to hold on fucking Sunday night for WrestleMania. But God damn, son. Just because a match has a bunch of moves, just because a match goes a long time, doesn't automatically equate to it being really fucking good. And I know a lot of you freaking NXT boner getters and you NXT cocksuckers will sit there and praise the ever-loving hell out of this match and probably are still circle-jerking off to what you saw on Friday night, and that's cool. 
congratulations, have at it. But for me, I thought it was poorly done. I thought it was poorly executed. I thought the match structure on several of these matches was crap. Absolute crap. Like, I look, a perfect example to me is Pete Dunne, who's been NXT UK champion for, what, 685 days. He's taken on this fucking almost 300-pound flabby dude named Walter the Austrian or whatever the fuck he is. I haven't really seen Walter before. So the first thing I do when I sit there and look, I'm like, oh, goddamn, he's different, especially from these UK fucks and especially from a lot of these NXT guys. This match needs to be structured in a way that allows him to really get over, but you can also book it in a way that really gets Pete Dunne over. But instead, as is so often the case in today's wrestling world, the roles are wrong, the roles are reversed, or you do worst of all, this 50-50 booking garbage where every match has to be fucking 100% balanced and competitive, and that's stupid! That's not the way this crap works! Think about things like the NCAA tournament. Yes, yeah, sometimes the underdog wins, but more often than not, it's the bigger schools that go on and they win the championship or they at least make the final four. And yes, I'm saying that I understand with wearing a VCU shirt. They went to the final four in 2011 and they haven't been back since. So it happens, but in the grand scheme of things, the bigger schools traditionally win more often than not, time after time. And when you look at something like this, Pete Dunne, even as the champion for 685 days, the way you should be presenting somebody like Walter should make him the clear-cut favorite. Like, oh my God, how the fuck could Pete Dunne possibly have a chance here? And you structure a match where Pete Dunne is tough as shit and he takes a lot of abuse, but he's consistently and thoroughly dominated and abused. So that way, when he loses, he still looks great. And at the same token, Walter looks great because, man, yeah, Pete Dunne took a lot, but Walter did a lot of shit to him. Walter looked big. Pete Dunne looked bigger. They both got over more because of it. Like, that, to me, is the logic of how a match should fucking be. Not all those 25 minutes of these guys fucking slapping shit and around and fucking yanking on fingers and doing all other types of dumb crap. To where you make Walter look small and ding dong dumb dicks, Pete Dunn is still small. It's the exact opposite of what the fuck we should be doing here. By God, what happened to basic storytelling elements in wrestling? This dude had an almost two year damn title reign as the NXT UK champion. The best way to end it is end it in big spectacular fashion to really get people buzzing. Instead, you do this 50-50 crap that feels like the two wrestlers actually booked this shit because neither one of them actually wants to get over in the right fucking way. They want to make sure they both look good and in the process, they make themselves and the other guy look like shit. The best thing about this match was when Walter won and it was fucking over. Screw those people that are going to sit there and talk about how great and awesome this match was. The whole time I'm just sitting there saying, God, the storytelling dynamics of this are so stupid. This is a perfect example of a match that could have went five to ten minutes, captured so many of the physical elements, and made both guys look great. Instead, it was extended way too fucking long because you actually don't have enough matches on this card. That way you can mix and match what you do so every fucking match doesn't go 20 plus goddamn minutes. Neither one of these guys gets over more to me. The match is lame. And instead of making me more interested in both guys, you made me less. Good job, Hunter and crew. You got this women's freaking fatal four win. And excuse me for just a second. I know that if you had a white guy, let's say, and I can't believe I'm going to do this, but I'm going to defend Randy Orton here for a second. Let's say Randy Orton was getting ready to defend a world title against... Kofi, Big E, and Xavier Woods. Or let's say Kofi, Shinsuke, and Andrade. So three guys that clearly aren't the same race ethnicity as him. If he sat there and was talking about they were wild animals and he was going to feed them freaking meat, people would be crucifying him, and legitimately so. But Shayna Baszler's fucking ass says this shit, and it's like nobody notices and nobody cares. Ah, oh, whatever. Imagine that.
hypocrisy at its finest. What was really stunning about this women's match, in terms of the length, the length was about right. You do have four women in there. You're trying to get everybody some shine and so forth. But you're in a four-way match. To have somebody lose by getting tapped out is sending a message. So, of course, it's got to be the black chick, Bianca Belair, that's got to tap out to Shayna Baszler. There's no reason to do this other than pettiness and sheer stupidity. Have her pin Bianca Belair. Have her choke her out to the point where she can't wake up and she's out. And you have to call the match. That's fine. But I hate when WWE does this. They unnecessarily have people tap out. You call it the Sasha Banks effect. Because you always want Sasha Banks to fucking win. She taps out Nia Jax a hundred damn times. Well, that's stupid. Well, here it was stupid. It would have been better and fit more of a grimy mode if you would have had Baszler sit there and knock off one of the other girls so that way she'd get a cheap pinfall on Bianca Belair. So while I didn't think the match was terrible, the finish was just really annoying. And then we get to this main event. It's Gargano. It's Adam Cole, baby! That's two out of three falls. As I said to myself, you know, not knowing the matches that were coming into this, I said, oh, God, this is going to take for fucking ever. I know it. And crowd, the crowd's going to sit there and have euphoric orgasm after euphoric orgasm. And the people watching and talking about it on social media are going to be all giggly tits about it. And I just knew that this match was going to be a, a long one and was going to eventually lose me. And it did. Now, to be fair, if I was there in person at the Barclays Center watching this match, I may very well have been much more into it. There is a possibility that this match might have played better for me in person than it did watching at home on my couch on the WWE Network. But I wasn't there. I was at home watching on my couch on the WWE Network. And there was just too much shit going on. Now, yes, I might sound like old man wrestling fan yelling at the clouds. I said, go away, damn you! I want to see sunshine! But the reality is, there was just too much going on. If you slow it down a little bit, it sounds like Dickie Me, baby! Like this match just went on. And on, and on, and on. And again, a perfect example of just because a match can go long doesn't mean it needs to. Just because a match can have all types of shit in it doesn't mean it needs to. This is what I always hated with ROH matches and New Japan matches. Is you get so much shit, so many false finishes, that the time you actually finally get to the end, I'm freaking worn out and fatigued and done. And the finish usually goes over like a fart in church. Now, clearly it didn't hear because everybody was giggly tits for Gargano winning. But this match was just too damn long and there was too much shit going on. These guys are kicking out of everything and anything. That's not good. All you do is you immediately sit there and start the match and then it's here, 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 here. There should be some ebb and flow and peaks and valleys and a slow eventual buildup to a real true crescendo, and that shit didn't happen. But I think that's more of a reflection of our society today. I can look at the NBA. That's what I kind of equate wrestling to now. Just because they're, in theory, people shoot more threes and hit more threes, and there's more offense than there maybe was 20 years ago in terms of total points in no way, shape, or form equates to a product being better. Because the defense is trash. It's so much isolation ball. Guys traveling worse than they ever freaking have. All the freaking offensive fouls they don't call. Like, I can go on and on down the laundry list. And a lot of other people can, too. Just because guys can sit there and walk their asses off and sit there and jack up a bunch of threes or drive uncontested to the hoop, and score more points than 15, 20 years ago doesn't make the NBA product better. A lot of people hate the modern NBA product because it lacks balance. And for wrestling now, to me, it lacks balance. And this match was a perfect example of that. Almost 40 fucking minutes of these guys going balls to the walls gets old after a while if you, to me, have any standards whatsoever. 
And then even after all of this, now all of a sudden we're freaking turning Tommaso Ciampa babyface because he had neck surgery and he's coming out to hug Gargano like, oh, fuck everything else that those guys did the last year plus before that. Like, what the fuck? Like, what happened to wrestling fans having standards for God's sakes? What happened to wrestling fans wanting guys to actually be characters? What happened to wrestling fans actually wanting stories to be told? There was no story told here with fucking Cole and Gargano other than that these two idiots were going to sit there and go out there and do every fucking move and false finish in the damn world for 38 plus fucking minutes. No thank you, I'll pass. So a lot of you might have sat there and enjoyed the hell out of this. If you did, good for you. I'm glad. Just don't expect me to celebrate it because I feel like you're helping contribute to the delinquency of professional wrestling today and are helping to further fucking bury this fucking business. You're digging the hole that more and more the business is not going to be able to dig out of. Not every match needs to have 300 goddamn spots. Not every match needs to have two guys with bland-ass fucking characters. Not every goddamn match needs to go this fucking long. Mix shit up a little. Learn how to actually work for a goddamn change. And for fans, learn to have some goddamn standards. That's right, I said have some standards, damn you! It shouldn't have to be rocket science. But apparently it is with modern wrestling. Good Christ. NXT TakeOver New York was boring and it damn near put me to sleep on multiple occasions. The hell with all this best gigs, key takeover of all time. It's going to be the same shit all the time. These same fucking knuckleheads that will sit there and poo WWE legitimately so every time they come out of a WrestleMania or a big pay-per-view. And they say, it's the greatest one of all time. And they're like, oh, bullshit. Cut it out. Yeah, when it comes to NXT TakeOver, it can never be bad. Every single one of them is great. I'll spend my time. And they get old. Like, we're going to get into a point five years from now that in order for these shows to legitimately still entertain you, two guys are going to have to lose their sphincters on the fucking top turnbuckle. One guy's going to have to have his dick, dick chopped off. And one of them's going to have to fly through the air Owen Hart style in order for you to be satisfied. Good lord.